Okay, everybody, welcome to our podcast, our live session with immigration attorney Yakov Spector. And the reason why I called Yakov, and I appreciate your time, Yakov. I know we are very busy these days, uh, especially with uh, Ukrainian refugees. That's exactly why I called you, is because, as I understand, new rules came out uh, regarding TPS. TPS is temporary protected status for Ukrainian refugees. And um, I read in some papers that now up to 60,000 Ukrainians in U.S. will be eligible to participate, which to me is not enough. I just want to do a little preface. Uh, or a forward. I don't think it's nearly enough. Uh, there are millions of people that are displaced in Ukraine and outside Ukraine in uh, Poland and surrounding countries. Uh, and White House has to do better. Yesterday, I um, was published in a Washington Post newspaper because I wrote a letter in March to the White House to President Biden demanding more uh, quotas demanding more accessibility to U.S. for the Ukrainian refugees. Uh, and specifically, uh, from what I understand, only up to 100,000 Ukrainians will be let in, while, as we said, there are millions of refugees. And the requirements are very narrow that you could qualify. And we're going to talk to Yakov uh, Spector about it. You're going to explain to us exactly what you can do to get in. So this letter that I did was published in Washington Post. I'm very happy about that because that gives exposure to this issue. And this letter is on my Facebook pages, on Instagram, everywhere. So if you guys uh, care about this issue, please uh, do similar letters. Was the more pressure we put on, on the White House, uh, the more hopefully they will respond. And more importantly, we have to get it in the media. So the more it's in the media, the more there's pressure for President Biden and his administration to respond, to give more protection for Ukrainian refugees who are right now in dire need. Because who are these ref refugees? This is mostly women and children because the man has to stay behind and fight. So we have to do whatever we can with our contacts, with our resources to give light to this issue. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you now Yakov uh, Spector. Now you're an immigration attorney, so obviously this is your cup of tea. Please tell us what has changed today as opposed to yesterday with TPS, Special Protection for Ukrainian Refugees. Thank you, Michael. Actually, uh, you know, this is uh, something that, that we've been waiting for the government to start moving on for more than a month and a half. They announced that they will start accepting TPS applications in the beginning of March. At that mm -hmm. point, they said that basically anybody who would have arrived before uh, March 1st would be eligible. But as of yesterday, okay. they um, uh, uh, extended that. So now anybody who is, who, uh, who, who is, who is here since before uh, April 11th. So it's, okay. uh, April 11th, that's the cutoff. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you arrived on April 11th, you're still eligible. But if, if you arrived on April 12th, you are not. So just now, to get this straight, I'm going to just do follow-up questions with sure. you. So if you come right now through Mexico, or whatever, to America, you're not eligible. You're not. Would you expect this that the government? You're not. And, uh, uh, the the reason for that is that you know this program was initially designed to sort of to protect the people who are already in the country from returning back if some natural calamity mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know the government is just using the tools that it has. It's not really passing any new laws, unfortunately, and mm -hmm. your efforts. Uh, with putting pressure on the media through, uh, you know, through the media on the government right. are very helpful in that. But yeah. what GPS is a tool that the government had in its arsenal for a while. So mm -hmm. that's what they're mm -hmm. doing. You know, they're pre pretty much just designating people who are already here. Okay, we're happy mm -hmm. that they expanded it to April 11th. Okay. Uh, because in the last month or so, a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugees who truly were running away from this war Mm -hmm. uh, are going to be able to apply. But of course, the government needs to do more. Uh, we're hoping that they will expand this program. Definitely, Absolutely. anybody who is here, who arrived before uh, April 11th should be registering for it, unless mm -hmm. unless there is an easier uh, way for them to get permanent status, okay? And mm -hmm. unfortunately, mm -hmm. that does not mean asylum. We're not going to be talking about this today, but let me just tell you that if you are here in the United States, you arrived before April 11th, 
You don't have a green card. You're a citizen of Ukraine. Um, uh, and you're thinking, well, should I be applying for political asylum or mm -hmm. should I be applying for TPS? I right. would say definitely apply for TPS okay. and talk to someone like me about your chances for political asylum. You mm -hmm. have one okay. year to apply for, for political asylum since you arrived here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but mm -hmm. TPS is definitely something that you should be you should be getting on uh, the uh, website, trying to register, trying to apply, uh, get your work permit, get your status registered. And let me ask you, uh, this status, TPS, what rights does it give you? Can you vote? Can you work? What can you do? Okay, well, that's actually, that's a great question, Michael. So one thing that you should know, okay? And by, by you, Michael, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking to your audience. I'm talking right. to any Ukrainian refugees who might be here. Okay, definitely don't vote. Definitely don't register to vote. Only US citizens are able to vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. there are some very limited exceptions, but you know, voting is definitely something that you shouldn't be doing. I'm sure it's not on your mind. But if anybody tells you that they will try to register you to vote, you don't want to do that, okay? Yeah, now, that could be criminal, actually. That it could be, right. So uh, unless you're a citizen of the United States, in which case you're probably not watching it, okay? You should not be voting in the United States. Okay, what about work? Can you work? Now, the work permit, that's something that comes with TPS, Okay. Uh, but it's not automatic. You will have to file a separate application mm -hmm. for the work permit, mm -hmm. okay? Pay the separate mm -hmm. filing fee. It definitely makes sense because once you file for your work permit, the government will send you your social security card. So it, they will assign a social security number to you, you so that you are able to pay your taxes from any of your employment earnings. Uh -huh. And um, in your experience, how long does it take to get this permit to work? Because people come here, I mean, look, I know Ukrainians, they're very hardworking people. Uh, as any immigrants, we come here to work, to make this a better place for us and for the country. How long does it take usually to get this permit to work? Uh, the government's been very backed up with the work permit applications. People were losing their jobs because it, it, would take, it would take them 10, sometimes 11 months, nine months to get the work permits. Now they're hopefully uh, speeding things up a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, we, are, we are beginning to see that they're processing those work permits sooner. Uh, mm -hmm. How long is it going to take uh, to take them to process the TPS work permit is uh, no one's uh, is anyone's guess really because they're just beginning to accept the applications literally starting today. Okay, even mm -hmm. though they're already uh, there is a link to uh, uh, to file an online application that's already up. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, there is still no dedicated TPS uh, you, uh, page uh, on the USCIS website that's dedicated to Ukraine. We're expecting that to be up shortly, but see, uh, this but is why we've been waiting for a while. This is what gets me riled up and upset. Uh, Biden makes this amazing announcement. We're going to have TPS for Ukrainians, but it has no meat on the bone. There's very oh, scant absolutely. details. I would it say it sounds even, beautiful. <laughs> there's not even bones there. It's more of a ghost uh, of a this promise. Is, see, this is ridiculous. There are people right now that are under bombs, people that are suffering, or people who are refugees have no place to go. People are going to Mexico and they could fall prey to human traffickers, uh, to the cartel. Uh, they have to pay their own way to come here to Mexico. And we're just giving, giving out these beautiful statements, but uh, there's no practical way for people to come here. There's no airlift from uh, Poland, from other countries to America. That's how it should have been done, like with the Afghan refugees. And again, the quota itself, I believe it's still it's 100,000 total, right? It's very, very uh, small. It's a drop on the bottom, in, in the ocean. You, you, and even that number, uh, uh, Michael, is it, uh, it's, uh, you know, I hate just to say that, but even that number for now, okay? Uh, we, we simply don't know uh, whether that number is going to be uh, something that they will accept in the next few months, or are, are they just going to basically spread it over the next few years and accept 20,000 refugees a year? We, okay, we so don't have any job. details. There is no mechanism set in place for that number. It's a promise. At some point, they will probably accept 100,000 refugees. But uh, if you're a refugee waiting to come to the United States at the moment, 
do not rely on that. That's not something that will probably be available to okay, you. Okay, so time. our job as uh, a community, as people who live in, in America, uh, because we have a voice, we are pretty comfortable here. We have the resources, the contacts. Please share this video. Share the letter I did to Washington Post to the White House. Uh, do your own letters. Bring awareness to your local politicians that they should put pressure on the federal officials to not only enact a higher quota, but whatever exists now to actually get to work and make it practical. So a Ukrainian refugee can go smoothly on the website or their attorney and apply and get answers and get papers as soon as possible without having to rely on the cartel to smuggle them through a tunnel in Mexico. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, regarding the tunnel in Mexico, okay, okay. Um, uh, there is uh, uh, the government is now accepting um, uh, applications for something called humanitarian parole at the border from okay. the Ukrainian refugees. Okay. What that what means is, that? is if you are a Ukrainian refugee and you show up at the border, okay, and you tell them, hey, let me in this country. I don't have a visa to come to the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have anything that will allow me to come to the United States. But because of the war, allow me to enter. Okay, this is called humanitarian parole. And the government is now accepting applications from the Ukrainian refugees. At the Tijuana border crossing, there is now, uh, uh, from what I hear, a dedicated window that accepts those uh, applications. Now, what that means is that if you get to that window, if you're a Ukrainian refugee in Mexico and you'll get mm -hmm. to that window, they'll probably let you in the United States, especially if you have someone here, like friends or relatives who, uh, you know, might say that, hey, you know what, uh, we'll house you, we'll uh, provide food, we'll provide room, we'll provide board okay. for you. Uh, but one thing to note is that as of last week, okay, the wait time, okay, at uh, that border crossing, okay, for Ukrainian refugees were, was uh, in excess of 30 hours. I believe, wow. and so you might expect to spend days there at the border. So you're Elsewhere. stuck, vulnerable and exposed, women and children, absolutely, in, at a Mexico border, absolutely, where, with coyotes. When I mean human coyotes, uh, and human traffickers roam, where they could extort you, kidnap you, sell you into sexual slavery. You're waiting there. <laughs> For days well, and days. Uh, Michael, uh, there is always a danger of that. I think it's a small chance, but nevertheless, of course, you're in a strange country. Okay, you uh, you don't know how things are going. There's lots of uh, volunteers on the ground who will help you, who will even provide okay. shelter. They set up That's a shelter cool. in the local nice. in local uh, gyms, in local community centers. But uh, you have to be very careful. Yes, mm -hmm. this is not something that you want to be doing with small children or with the elderly, even though that sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes this is something that you have to do. But if you do this, just know that uh, you might be facing the weight of uh, many, many hours, if not days. So, Yakov, should these people contact you first uh, before they attempt this, just to get more details? Um, or should they you know, contact uh, you once, once they're already in America? What do you uh, recommend? Well, Michael, uh, uh, there is really not much that I can do from this side of the border. Okay, mm -hmm. once the once you are here, okay, once mm -hmm. your relatives are here, okay, it might make sense to consult me regarding the next steps. Okay, okay. because if they're here on a humanitarian parole, uh, they might be able to apply for a work permit. Might be. Mm -hmm. Okay, if they if they're already here, they might be able to apply for TPS. Uh, they might be able to apply for political asylum. All of those things. Uh, are not something that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, people should do lightly, okay? They should definitely consult a good immigration attorney. Yeah. It could be me, it could be another immigration attorney. You might be prepared to wait a few days until uh, I am able to consult you. But uh, uh, if, you're, if you're in Mexico waiting to come in at the U.S. border crossing, that's, uh, I will not be of much help. You know, mm -hmm. just uh, uh, try to get to the window, apply for humanitarian parole, get in. Uh, so why don't you share your phone number in case somebody wants to contact you once they're here. And I understand you speak Russian as well. So you'll Thank be able you. to help them if they're willing to speak Russian, uh, which is another issue right now. Uh, also, the reason why we're doing this here in, on, uh, on Facebook is because people have friends and relatives in... Uh, oh, say hi to your cat. Uh, and the reason um, we're doing it here is so that friends and families of uh, Ukrainians can uh, get this information and they can uh, 
send it over to their uh, friends. Uh, so why don't you share your phone number, please? Uh, my phone number is 646-543-0745. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our main office is in New York, but we work with clients all over the United States. Okay. As I said, uh, if you need to get in touch with me, call that number, schedule a consultation. But... Uh, most likely, um, uh, it, this will be useful for your relatives once they're already right. in the United States. Okay, if you want to consult me regarding their options when they're outside of the United States, you could do so too. One mm -hmm. thing to note, okay, is uh, if they're in Europe, they're able to apply for something called temporary protect. Uh, oh no, that's in the, for for displaced person status. Okay. In Europe. Okay. okay. Now, uh, Europeans. Uh, oh, I don't know that. Will, okay. Uh, will uh, will gi give people who are in the in the displaced person status. They will mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, give them uh, medical insurance. They will give them some sort of financial aid. Uh, they will uh, give them a work permit and opportunity. So it's like TPS, but it's for for Euro European Union. Europeans, right? And they would mm -hmm. apply for it in the country, in the particular European country that they kind of end up in. Okay, because mm -hmm. they're able to travel without visas through through Europe. OK, and uh, um, uh, it's, it, you know, as far as the benefits go, it's a better deal than temporary protected status in the United States, because really? in the United States, they will be able to work. Yes. On that you side. See, Europeans are much more generous when it comes to immigrants. However, I believe America, with such vast resources, vast geography, has the wherewithal to house many more refugees. So Absolutely. I believe. USA has a big responsibility here to do everything we can to accept, accommodate, protect uh, immigrants and refugees from Ukraine. We should be doing more. We are a land of opportunity. Yes, we, exactly. al we will allow you to work here, okay? But yeah. uh, I think we should be doing more, especially for mm -hmm. the women and children and refugees who come here. Yeah. And I hope we will. Jakob, just briefly, I want to pick up on something. I had a question. You said that uh, you should have uh, like a sponsor here when you apply for TPS or... Uh, or no, it's not no, uh, You patrol? don't need a sponsor to apply for TPS at all. Okay. Uh, what I was I talking about that. is that if you're coming through the border, if there's mm -hmm. someone to pick you up, and uh, oh, you know, okay, I, uh, okay. if there is someone to, that you know you could go to, okay, you will okay. be processed probably, you will be probably processed and released faster, okay, because okay, the government okay, knows... So it's better to have to take care somebody of. here that can vouch for you that will give them housing and food Correct. is better okay Correct. but Understood. not once if you're applying for tps if you're already mm -hmm. here you do not need uh, a u.s sponsor okay you, all you need to show is that you've been uh, you you are here as of april 11th 2022 Understood. okay uh yakov is there anything else you want to add before i uh, conclude this session uh, Michael, thank you for doing the good work. Uh, you. Let's I hope that the government does as much as we are doing for uh, for exactly. the Ukrainian refugees and for yeah. all your relatives. Good luck. I hope that they get here uh, without uh, uh, any particular issues, safe and sound. Yakov, thank you so much. And I want to also say that next week we're doing a separate, separate session, a seminar for Russian refugees, because of course the first priority should be for Ukrainian refugees, they're actually running away from peril to their lives from, from bombs. However, let's not forget, there are also Russian uh, refugees from uh, Russia who are dissidents, who are against the war, or as they say, special operation, uh, who are speaking out, demonstrating they're losing their jobs. They're also at a risk of getting imprisoned in Russia. So they should also be accommodated there's not the same degree of protection for them. However, Yakov, you do have some tool in your arsenal, right? For we will be able Russian to immigrants. give them some pointers, that's for sure. Yeah, and exactly. I, I believe we're going to be doing that session in Russian, right, Michael? Correct. We're doing it in Russian. Uh, we're doing it next week. Uh, we may, uh, depending on the interest, and I think there's going to be great interest, do another one for Russian immigrants in English. So again, their friends and relatives who don't speak Russian that well, could share with them. Uh, I think this is very useful. If anybody has any questions, comments, please post them in the, your, in the, the Facebook uh, posts below, and we're going to try to answer them in, in the next session, or Yaakov uh, Spectre will answer at his uh, free time. Again, Yaakov, give your phone number if anybody wants to reach out to you. 
If anybody wants to call me, it's 646-543-0745. But do you okay. leave do you leave the comments under the under under this video? Yeah. yeah, I'll see if I can get some time. Maybe I'll be able to uh, to answer it, and it will be useful for everyone. Very good, Jakub Spector, immigration attorney. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Thank you, Michael. We hope that all refugees come in here safely and uh, soundly, and we're going to do everything we can to help out. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Enjoy everyone. The rest of the day. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye-bye.